Welcome to the newest installment of The Complete Package, where we go over a game's achievements and complete them together in one complete package. Today, we are talking about Tide of Tasmanian Tiger 2, a game I hold near and dear to my heart as I played it religiously as a kid. But as console generations headed into the future, I ended up leaving the game in the past. But my love for the series was reignited during my completion of the game's achievements. So let's talk about it. Titan Tasmanian Tiger 2 Bush Rescue was originally released in 2004 and was given an HD remastered version in 2021 for a new generation. This remaster provides plenty of benefits, upgraded graphics, frame rates, and overall refinements. But most importantly for me, achievements. 25 achievements, 1000 year score, and an open world to navigate as a member of Bush Rescue. So. Grab your rangs, bring your bunyip keys, and get ready to head down under and unlock these achievements. Tide 2 starts off with a prison break in progress, and the Bush Rescue Squad has to stop Cass's goons from breaking him out of prison. And this is literally where the game starts. You get thrown straight into a new manner of gameplay compared to what you may be used to from the first installments, which I will refrain from discussing too much, but I gotta say, this game's gameplay improves drastically over the previous one. It's a great opening where you get thrown into what the game has to offer and the improvements they have made over the first one. After this opening sequence and introductory fight, Cass escapes along with Fluffy unlocking our first achievement, Prison Break. How fitting! And now that we have completed the introduction level, we get introduced to the Bush Rescue HQ, its current crew, and the open world that surrounds us. An exciting start to a game that has much more to offer. First things first, you'll want to learn what's new with the controls in this game. So talk to Sneath and Keith over at their place near our HQ. Also, fairly important fact over here, those stars on the map are actually missions. When you see a grayed out star, that means you have a completed mission in that area, which you can actually repeat if you did want to. So you'll always know where you need to head to next if you look for the next star that is colored in. And oh, would you look at that? We have to talk to these two dudes anyways to complete their mission. Since we do need to complete 100% of this game to unlock all of the achievements, we need to make sure there is no stone left unturned. So, now that we have spoken to Sneath and Keith, it is time for us to continue on after we have learned about the game's mechanics, and we have gotten bombarded by these alliterating lizards. Press the jump button to get some air, just like Jess the Jumping Joey from Jabaluga. Moving on, it is time to explore the open world and see what it has to offer us. First off, walking into Burramudgee Town, you are prompted to head over to the rank shop. And look who's there, it's Ty's parents, who we do see at the end of the first game, so it was nice to notice them here. They are selling us a good selection of ranks to start off with. The Flame Rang, Frosty Rang, Zappy Rang, the Infra Rang, and many more are up for sale. Some iconic rangs here, I gotta say. But they aren't the only ones who sell rangs in this game, but we shall get to that later. After spending our hard-earned opals on our first few ranks, it is now time for us to test them out. First thing I did was turn right around back to the water near the Bush Rescue HQ. I saw there was this disc-looking object in the middle of the water, which could only be accessed by someone with a frosty rank. And guess what I bought? That's right, I can now reach this item thanks to our visit to the rank shop. So I create stepping stones in the water using the freeze rank to pick up the first of a ton of collectibles in this game. And while I say a ton, that is not an understatement. But the way that the collectibles in this game are approached is something that one can easily digest. Now, let me explain. In total, there are 320 collectibles in the game. These can be broken down into six different collectible types. You have 30 chromium orbs, 50 silver cogs, 175 picture frames, 30 bilbies that you need to rescue, 25 hidden frills, and 10 locations where you can find Steve, our goober juice guy. There was this time when this thing happened in this place I was at. Oh boy. Was that ever an adventure? And in addition to the categorization of the collectibles, you also have a statistics screen, which informs you on what is missing from each section that you have visited, as well as one main stats screen that informs you of your running total. And in addition to all of that, if you find 10 orbs, you can purchase a collectible map, which shows you the location of the type of the collectible the purchased map is related to. But it only shows up on the map when you have the infrang or the X-Rang equipped. And there are three total maps to purchase relating to hidden frills, bilbies, and silver cogs. Which means, in the end, all that you need to locate manually without in-game assistance is all 30 orbs, all 175 frames, which are normally located in bundles of 2 to 4, and Steve in all of his 10 locations. That is a pretty manageable system for collectible hunting if you do ask me. Okay, now, with all of that done, all of that collectible talk is out of the way, I will not mention them for some time. Just assume that as I am playing through the game, I am searching for any collectibles in my path, which I would be able to grab. Which is how I recommend you play the game as well. You do need specific ranks to reach specific collectibles, but that's all a part of progression. 
I would always make sure I grabbed whatever I could whenever I was able to. All right, moving on from the first orb, we are headed into town to find a missing child and clear out crocodiles from the sewers for Ranger Ken. A few quick and easy missions to start things off. Then after that, we make our way over to the exit of the town to find Shaza is waiting to give us a ride. Thanks, Shaz. Yes. Now that we have joined up with Shaza, this is our first chance to legitimately interact with the open world. We have made it to what you can consider the hub of the game, Southern Rivers. This area allows you to access each specific area within the game by driving over to each location. Things do start off a little bit restricted, but they do quickly open up and allow you to have more freedom to access each area as you complete more missions. Speaking of missions, let's go complete one. We are saving a film crew from a bunch of attacking ninjas, which turn out to be just them filming a movie. Whoopsies, sorry to ruin the shot, you guys. <laughs> um, but in all fairness though, they did call us and this isn't the first time we'll run into them. Just wait, you shall see. So moving on, we check out a new area on the hunt for our next mission and we make our way over to a battle testing mission where we just fight enemies for Julius's experiments, which I still question if this is ethical testing, like I'm fighting these enemies for science? What? How did you get them to partake in this experiment? Are they your prisoners? Were they forced to fight me? Am I killing them? Julius, are you evil? Anyways, um, let's not think about that. We're moving on to a lighter topic. <laughs> it's time to race. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. One of the most fun mini games available to us. It is literally a kart racer within the game. It's awesome and it is actually incredibly fun. Attaining first place does also tend to come easily, but the races are often tense and you run the risk of missing out on that gold trophy if you make too many mistakes. And after completing the first of seven races available in the game, we finally pop our second achievement. Nice guys, don't finish last. After the high of that achievement pop, we continue on completing another mission and another race, making sure to get first place in that one as well for a future achievement. And now we continue on the search for our next mission, which turns out to be a little bit more than I expected. We get thrown into a boss fight against Patchy. This boss fight is nothing too crazy or unusual for the series. In fact, it's right up its alley. The boss fight has three phases which are not complicated at all, especially if you use the locking on system available in this game. You start targeting his head, then his tail, and then finally his back. Once Patchy's health is brought down to zero, that is the battle completed, which unlocks us our third achievement, Patch It Up. And now that Patchy has been defeated, we can travel to new sections of Southern Rivers to complete more missions, which is exactly what we will do. Starting with some more totally ethical battle testing and then a nice and calming mission where we repair some bridges for Dennis. After that, we return to Buramudgee Town and speak to the police chief who is looking for a frill that is disguised as a koala. We equip our infrarang and begin the hunt for the hidden frill. Once we locate it, we pop it in the head and go turn in our mission. This is the first of two missions related to the hidden frill collectibles themselves, mind you, so we cannot actually locate any more until we progress further with the game and unlock the second mission for finding the rest of the hidden frills. A bit of a bummer since I thought I could locate them immediately, but at least we get to find them at some point, right? Now, with that mission complete, we also find a frill posing as a ghost using our infrarang, which also means ghosts exist in this world. Do you think the ghosts of those battle testing experiments would be angry at us? Let's just, uh, uh, let's not think about that, all right? Um, yeah. Now that we have those two missions complete, Dennis has asked us to deliver a meal over to the construction workers at the beach. So we zip on over there and deliver their lunch to complete another mission. With that completed, we have the beach to explore all to ourselves, making sure we collect as many collectibles as we can. We also have a race available to us, but we'll complete that at another time. Let's continue on with the missions. We have our final battle testing mission, which means with this complete, we are fully trained and can stop killing people for science. Don't think I will miss that, I'm gonna be honest. Next up, we deliver some sunscreen to Rex on the beach, get first place in another race, and make our way over to Frillneck Forest. Not much is notable here in this section, if I'm being honest. It's all around a pretty cool level though, with decent platforming and collectibles to find. But what makes this area one of my favorites is the ridiculously dumb joke that I cannot help but love. Hello, who are you? Bruno? I'm trying to face my fears. You see, I suffer from hypsophobia. What? Huh? You're scared of hippies? <laughs> no, scared of heights. <laughs> I figured that if I face my fears, I could overcome them. Like, it's just such a dumb joke. But I love the game for these kind of moments. It's just such a highlight for me. Anyways, moving on, we find our Goobajus guy on the way out of Frillneck Forest, listen to his story, and collect some opals from him. 
And would you look at how many opals we have after all these missions? Damn, this bad boy can fit so many opals in it. And with all those opals in our pocket, it is definitely time for us to purchase some rings from mom and dad. And after we have cleared out their inventory and purchased everything they have to offer, we unlock our fourth achievement. I need rings. And since we have roughly 17,000 opals left to spare, it's time to head over to Trader Bob's General Store to purchase all three of the Bunyip licenses available, unlocking us our fifth achievement, Keymaster, which currently has us sitting at 160 total gamer score out of 1,000. Pretty decent all around, but let's continue. We continue to complete some missions and find ourselves in Mount Boom, a large volcanic level with a cool art style that I found myself getting pretty turned around in. So to save you some time, the main objective of this opening area is to trigger three switches by spraying them with water. These moving platforms need to be positioned so that you can jump across them to reach the switch, and you need to do this for all three of these switches. Once that is done, you will open up the door to the next section, which is under the water, or I guess lava. But this looks like water though, which was really confusing for me. So I was, uh, you know, looking for water. I was not looking for lava, but this door is in fact under the lava in this room. So dive down and start swimming your way to the entrance into the next section. As we are moving deeper into the volcano, we save the trapped construction workers to complete this mission and receive our reward. After that, we head over to this tall structure in Southern Rivers, which we have to platform up to the top of. At the top, we of course locate Steve, the Gooba Juice guy, and listen to him talk about his walkie Momo dance, and then he tells us we smell. Something smells in here. I think it's you. You should go now. And then we head over to the shop just around the corner, and oh, look who it is. It's Sly. I was wondering where this guy was since the game's opening. Turns out he's running his own shop. Remember how I said that Ty's parents weren't the only ones selling rangs? Well, that's because Sly is the other person doing so. And he offers way better rings. Like seriously, screw the frosty ring. I want the freeze ring. Flame ring? Nah, man. I want that lava ring. Sly has the remaining rings left in the game. And once we purchase all of them from him, we'll be able to unlock another achievement. But the only thing preventing us from doing so is opals. So let's complete more missions so we can earn more money. Starting off with a new mission from Ranger Ken. He wants us to locate the remaining frills in the game, which finally means we can start looking for them ourselves. So from here on out, you can see me having the infrarang or X-rang equipped, so I can always be keeping an eye out for a hidden frill. FYI, the frills are always disguised as construction workers, so they're pretty easy to look out for overall. And after that mission, I figured it is time to do some collectible searching. So I make my way through the town collecting what I can when I come across one silver cog that will plague my mind for the rest of my playthrough, the impossible cog. This cog is stuck on a platform just out of reach of any building and there's no clear way to reach it and no button in sight. I was just simply at a loss. I could not fathom how to acquire this collectible. I figured my answer would come in the future in the form of a rang I have yet to unlock and decided to press onward planning to keep this impossible cog in the back of my mind, and it lingered there every time I opened up the game. I did eventually grab it, but that's a discussion for later on. For now, we are continuing on with the missions available to us. We make our way to the oil rig where we start up a lengthy mission with many enemies, obstacles, and fires for us to put out. And while we are here in this oil rig, we need to ensure we put out all of the fires in our path, because we need to unlock the achievement to oil's well that ends well, which is for putting out all of the fires in this area. It feels like it's been quite a while since we popped an achievement, so it's nice to say that we now have our sixth achievement. And after we do unlock that, we go on to fight our next boss, Buster. An overall easy boss fight with straightforward mechanics, who killed me only a couple of times. I'm willing to admit that, but I beat him after long enough. Unlocking our seventh achievement, totally bustered. And with the second boss of the game defeated, that has opened up even more of Southern Rivers for us to explore. Meaning more collectibles, more missions, and more fun. We complete some of the missions that are newly available to us and make our way to a new area, Sulphur Rocks. An area with a ton of missions, collectibles, and things to do. So, let's do them! The missions completed in the area were some of the most memorable for me. You have a trial to complete in the Temple of Karnuk, where you go through a bunch of rooms defeating enemies to make it to a final room to get your reward. And then you have this alien stuck on the other side of lava who needs rescuing, and he really wants you to know where he's at. And then finally, and this is my favorite quest so far, you have a mission that you can compare to the likes of Temple Run or Subway Surfer, where you have three tracks to grind on and you have a huge beetle chasing after you and obstacles to avoid. It's just so random, but I love it. It's like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing now, and you just gotta go along with it. It's another charming piece of the game that just brings me so much joy. But with all of the missions completed in Sulphur Rocks, it is time for us to breathe and relax for a moment. And what better way to do than listen to Lenny the Lyrebird tell us some stories? So let's take a breather and listen to Lenny for a few moments. He's got nine stories to tell us. 
From stories of when he was a door-to-door -door salesman to when he was told that the color yellow was a shade of blue. And after we listened to his ninth story, we unlocked the achievement 100% true. Now, you can skip all of these stories and still unlock the achievement, but if we're being honest, you should listen to them all. They're a treat. It's around 12 minutes of uninterrupted Lenny stories. Who wouldn't love that? Now that we have uh, zened out and relaxed for a moment, it is time for us to get back into action and complete a race and get another first place trophy, getting us to a total of three races completed basically halfway there. Then after that, we complete a mission for Rex and then head over to Fair Dinkum, where we meet two Tasmanian Tigers. One is Ty's sister, who I just found out exists as I met her and her boyfriend, Duncan. They need us to power their generators, so we do just that. Remember how I said I was going to be collecting all of the collectibles in an area when I'm within it? Well, there's this one silver cog at the end of the level that is only accessible by hitting a button. The problem is that this button can only be hit at a specific angle almost as if I needed to remotely control a boomerang so it could turn how I needed it. Which got me thinking, that must be what I need for the impossible cog too, right? There's no other explanation. And I didn't let that go for the longest time. The only time I let that go is when I found out the real way of getting the impossible cog. But once again, we're not there yet. All we need to do is remember that we need a remote controlled rank to hit this button in fair dinkum. So with that in mind, we are moving on. Heading over to the wetlands, we have to save Dennis's brother and nephew from some loose crocs that have escaped from their cage. So we wrangle them right back into their pen and complete the mission, being rewarded with a silver cog for our efforts. Now, we are moving on to the boss fight against Fluffy. This is the third boss fight in the game which will open up the remainder of the map for us, so it's one that I have been looking forward to greatly. This fight is very straightforward. You take your bunny up, shoot the big robots from the four different turret positions to take them all out, and then you target Fluffy. We approach this battle in this order because if the robots stay alive, Fluffy heals herself, which just gets really annoying. But after the robots have been taken out, you just need to dodge the balls that are coming at your face and punch Fluffy a few times. Once she loses all of her health, the battle is won and Fluffy is no longer a threat. Which honestly makes me kind of sad as I like the interaction she has with Ty. They bounce off each other really well. Well look who's here! It's number one on the least wanted list! <laughs> That's rich coming from number one on the annoying rat list. But I digress. With our achievement for beating Fluffy unlocked, it is time for us to get ready for the end game. Completing all the missions we can, collecting every collectible we can, and saving up our opals for the final ranks we need to purchase from Sly. And we need a hell of a lot more opals than I would have guessed. But we'll talk about that near the end of the game. So, continuing on with missions, we run some dynamite over to the mines for Julius and complete a few more races. One of which I actually finished in 6th place, which is just embarrassing in all honesty. So I needed to restart that race and regain the glory of 1st place. And then we run into our second movie set and we save them from ninjas once again. And this time it was still part of the movie. They keep calling us even though they're not in trouble. It's like the boy who cried wolf. I don't think we'll believe you guys next time. But after that fiasco, we are headed to the largest level in the game, the Never Never. This level has more collectibles than any area and it has four missions total waiting for us. So we need to be prepared to be very thorough when we go through this area. But also we have the opportunity to look forward to some of those missions as well. We start off with a memory matching game, which I had some difficulty with somehow purple purple green yellow red purple 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 oh that's not cool dude purple green yellow what wait what purple green yellow red what we run into the alien once again and his spaceship needs a kicking so we go take care of that for him and then we run into a pair of alien sisters and one of them got stuck rock climbing so we save her and then we make it to our final mission in the Never Never, protecting Dennis from dinosaurs. This was an all around cakewalk of a mission as long as it doesn't glitch on you. If it does glitch on you, just go ahead and leave the area, then return to Dennis and things should reset. That's what happened to me. And then after that, all that I needed to do was just escort Dennis over to the location he wanted to head over to. So now that we have gotten that done, it is time for us to hit the road now that we have finished up with the Never Never. And where else do we find ourselves but at another movie set? And this time they're saying it's a real attack and they need saving, which is like, okay, why should I believe you? And then one of the characters says the most out of pocket thing she could say. Look here, I hope I wasn't out of line with that orange bath mat remark earlier. I don't remember it, but you were. Ooh, we called him that after <laughs> That's Jeepers, funny. we're sorry for getting <laughs> mad at you, Ty. But we save them anyways because that's what Bush Rescue does. And once we do save them, we also unlock the achievement Hollywood Square for completing all three of the movie set missions, which is just great for us because I'm happy to never see them again. And after popping that achievement, that leaves us with a total of 10 achievements and 330 gamer score. 
not too shabby, and we are definitely not stopping there. After saving those three from their attackers, we are now headed over to clear a traffic jam, and this is my least favorite mission in the game. We need to use this bunny up to lift these crates and place them on the truck bed, but this bunny up moves so slow and there are only 4 crates available within eyesight. So to locate the 5th one, you need to break some rocks that are in the corner of the area to locate the final crates. If you did not know you could break rocks with the bunny up or the smash rang, you would probably think the game was glitched, like I did the first time I ran into this mission. But it's not, you just gotta break the giant rocks in the corner of the area and walk incredibly slowly back to the truck to place it down and bam, the traffic jam is cleared and you can drive right through the area. And on the opposite side of this traffic jam, we can locate the final two races in the game. So let's go ahead and get first place in both of them. These two final races somehow ended up being my favorite of them all. I have no clue what was up, but both of them were full of action and maneuvers I was not expecting to be able to perform. It was super exciting, but nothing, and I mean nothing, would have prepared me for this moment. This moment, which I am about to let play out in its entirety, is just mwah, perfection. Okay, so I got three laps total that I gotta hit. I gotta try to remember to hit hit as many. Oh, oh, that was so damn cool. That was so cool. Holy, oh my god, I got knocked into a shortcut. That was so cool. Whoa. <laughs> Like seriously, I cannot tell you how stunned I was. It may seem like something small to you, but this is how I got to end my final race in the game. During a run with a seemingly impossible moment. Just a beautiful send off to a fantastic aspect of this game. And following my completion of that race, I unlocked the achievement Buramaji Graffiti with a TY for tie. And now that I'm floating on air with those victories under my belt, it's time to see if we can use our 50,000 opals at Sly's Shack. So we purchased the Deadly Rang, the X Rang, and wait. Is that rang worth 75,000 opals? Wait, does it say I can remote control it? This is big. This is huge. This opens up so many opportunities for me. I can get the cog in Fair Dinkum, and I can also get the impossible cog in town, right? Right? Well, we shall find out soon. First off, let's get back into the swing of things. Like I mentioned before, we are in the end game. We currently have seven missions left with a completion percentage of 85%. We were collecting as many collectibles as we could, and we were doing our best but now, it's time to really get into it. Now that we have most of the ranks available in the game, it's time for us to start returning to areas we have been in before and mopping things up. So along with completing some missions, we get to the collectibles as well. Starting off with a spark plug delivery mission. We take the spark plug from Sneath and Keith and take it all the way to this civilian who has had her car break down. And once we deliver it, we get this hilarious sequence playing out. Get out! Right. I'm here to fix your car. You took your time. I could okay, have grown now. a spark plug in the time it took you to get here. That's gross. There you go. <laughs> I could have grown Good one. as new. Well, I doubt that. Anyway, at least I can get to Baramudgy now. You wouldn't want to miss your Winger's Anonymous meeting. I heard that. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> then, after that roasting session, we head off to collect the remaining collectibles in Frillneck Forest, Mount Boom, and Outback Oasis. And once we return to Outback Oasis, we locate Steve in his final location, unlocking the achievement Falterdon. Following this, we also complete a mission for Ranger Ken, and then we save a prison transport from being knocked off of a cliff. Which is just a crazy sentence to say when you're talking about a kid's game. And then after that, we deliver Plutonium to Julius, and at this point in time, we are truly in the endgame. We have three missions left to complete. Which means we need opals, and we need them now. So, time to look online for grinding methods, that way we can get around 125,000 opals just to be safe, and BAM! Head over to True Achievements, and you have the best grinding method you could ask for. Shout out to the person who shared this because goddamn, it works wonders. With this grinding method, you head over to the beach and locate this island near this race location. You jump on the chairs here, collecting 3,000 opals total from the bags you can grab, and then you head over to the warp rank crystal nearby and warp up to the platform, which contains another 3,000 opals in a single bag. And there you have it, you have 6,000 total opals for one trip. Now head into the race nearby, start it up and immediately leave it, boom. The opal bags have respawned and then it's just a matter of rinsing and repeating until you get the amount you desire. And at this point in the game, all that I needed to do was unlock the achievement opal hoarder and have enough opals to purchase all of the remaining rings in the game. And bam, there we are. Once we have grinded enough, we are sitting pretty with around 128,000 opals available to us, preparing us for the end of the game. Okay. So before we close things off, let's take a moment to check our totals. Starting off with achievements, we are currently sitting at 13 unlocked achievements and 455 gamer score out of the total 25 achievements and 1000 gamer score. By these totals, that makes it seem like we are halfway there with the game, right? Well, take a look at our collectibles. We need two more bilbies, two more hidden frills, seven more frames, four more cogs, 
one more chromium orb, and finally, we need to purchase four more rings. Buckle up, people. We are about to pop off. So let's head over to Sly, purchase the rings we grinded out a ton of opals for, and pop that related achievement. And then next, let's head over to Sulphur Rocks to find the last hidden frill and the last orb that we need to unlock two more achievements. And now that we have all of the orbs in the game, we can purchase the final map from Madame Apoke. So let's purchase that. And bam, we have another achievement for us. And then, wait, before anything else, I now have a remote control boomerang, don't I? And the impossible cog must require me to use it to hit a button somewhere on the map, right? That's the only explanation, right? Well, no. It's much more disappointing than that. All I need to do is destroy the single crate which I have walked by countless times to reveal a button. Then I quickly jump onto the roof above and take the rope over to the other roof to reach the silver cog. It takes me a few attempts to successfully reach the impossible cog because the timing needed leaves barely any room for error, but hey, I got it after long enough. That is the impossible cog finally collected in a way that is honestly a bit of a letdown. Like seriously, I had thought of this cog to be the end goal. I had to use everything I knew to discover how to grab it. But nope, I was just too dumb to think about destroying this one crate to reveal a button. Nothing. Oh my goodness, there's a button! It was below a crate! Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. After collecting the coveted cog, let's head over to the beach to complete a mission for Rex and locate the final bilby to unlock yet another achievement for us. But we are not stopping there. We are headed over to Fair Dinkum to collect the remaining frames that we need. After doing so, we pop another achievement. I told you we were popping off. And now, we are currently sitting at 48 out of 50 silver cogs, meaning we need to head to the end of Fair Dinkum to use the Doomerang to press that button which I had mentioned before. It's finally time to line up the shot and hit the button dead on. It takes me a few attempts, but then the stars align and bam. The platform lowers and we can finally grab the last cog that we need. Also, after reviewing the footage, I did notice that I didn't need the Doomerang at all. I could have jumped to the platform with that button, but let's let my actions remain valid because it was so damn cool. Went right in the hole. Oh, I hit it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that was something, huh? But wait, 48 plus one equals 50. No, 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 no. 48 plus one equals 49. We're still missing one cog. What the hell, man? That one cog is actually in the final level, so let's gear up and head out to Cass's Pass. We are now finishing up the game. This truly is the end game now, everybody. Is that a Shadow Bunyip? Now in the final level with our Shadow Bunyip, which is just so cool. We are now making our way through all of these enemies over to Cass's Fortress. On our way, we face familiar foes like Patchy and Buster, which are just a complete cakewalk with our Shadow Bunyip. And in this arena where we fought those two mini bosses there is a button slightly out of view. So we hit that with our rockets and bam. Now we need to locate the four buttons that just spawned and we gotta do it quick. So we find one super high up, another one on the wall, another one just around the corner and finally right near the entrance to the arena. Hitting all four of these buttons opens up a new path for us. So we follow it and locate a bunch of enemies. And right at the end, we have now located the hidden 10,000 opal bag. After picking it up, we unlock yet another achievement to add to the list, but it does not end there. Pressing onward, we are nearing the final fight, mere moments away from the final battle, and bam! To our left is the final cog in the game. That is right, we have located the last cog and final collectible in the game. Meaning, all we have left to do before returning to Buramaji Town is to defeat Boss Cass. So, let's jump down there and get ready for this fight. It's us against Boss Cass, and while the fight isn't the most simple fight, it is by far the easiest thanks to our Shadow Bunyip and the abundance of health available to you. This fight has three phases. The nanobot phase, which I found the most difficult to maneuver against. The robot cast phase, which is the coolest phase, but also it's the easiest. You wait for him to slam on the ground and then you get your hits in on him. After that, you rinse and repeat. Finally, for the final legitimate phase of this fight, we have magma cast. Pretty damn cool, but also pretty damn easy. He shoots lava from the floors and he also shoots some lava at you, which you need to strafe around. But once you hit him enough, his chair is destroyed and we are now in the final moments of the fight. Boss Kaz looks honestly pretty sad running around like that, but we are adding insult to injury and damaging him a few more times to take him down. And with that, we have officially defeated Boss Kaz. After defeating Boss Kaz, we pop three achievements. Bush Rescue out of order, Bush Rescued, and finally, everything and the kitchen sink. We have now officially acquired 100% completion in the game, collecting all of the collectibles and completing every single mission available to us. But wait, if you've been keeping track of the achievements that have been unlocking, you will know we are sitting at 24 out of 25 achievements. We only have one left to go, and that is the only achievement which we could not complete before we finish the game, 
because we needed all of the silver cogs first. This final achievement requires you to purchase all of these skins for Ty and the 4B from Trader Bob. So let's return to Burramudgee Town and spend all of the remaining cogs we have left over to quickly purchase what we require. 50 cogs collected, 50 cogs spent, and bam, Skinny Dipper has been unlocked. That is 25 out of 25 achievements. 1,000 out of 1,000 gamer score and tie the Tasmanian Tiger 2 Bush Rescue HD has officially been completed. That is pretty awesome if you ask me. I love tie the Tasmanian Tiger and if you're at this point in this video, something tells me you just might love this game too. So to get you excited for the future, let's enjoy the secret ending the game rewards us with for reaching 100% completion. Good day! I have bad news, my friend. What's wrong? I cannot explain. You must see for yourself. Come with me. Where are we going? We are going to the dream time. Now, I hope the ending cutscene excited you as much as it excited me. The remasters for this series have most definitely reignited my passion for the games, and oh my god, I cannot tell you how excited I am to play the third game once it gets remastered. Fingers crossed it does, I sure hope so. That point in the series is when we get into games I've never played before, so I will be experiencing it for the first time, and it is just going to be awesome, I am sure. And with all of that being said, I do hope that you did enjoy the video. Thank you so much for watching. All right, and that is the end of the video. I do hope that you did enjoy. If you did enjoy, please do consider dropping a like. That would be greatly appreciated. Consider sharing it. If you want to press that copy button, go ahead and share that link. That would be greatly appreciated as well. And of course, stick around and subscribe if you did enjoy this because there will definitely be more content coming. If you guys have any games that you may be interested in seeing a video like this on, definitely let me know in the comments down below. If it's a short game, it should be easy enough to complete, right? So making a video on it wouldn't be too daunting. I probably won't be too quick on uploads on this channel if I am being honest, but I did have a lot of fun with this video and hopefully uh, you guys also enjoyed it and hopefully that motivates me to do more. You know, I have a few games that I have in mind for doing a similar video like this. I have a few games in my backlog that I'd be really interested in completing and maybe a video like this would motivate me to do so. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I do have a playthrough of this game. You probably saw the clips during the video. If you want to go ahead and check out that playthrough on my gaming channel, go ahead and click on the screen right now, wherever the ch channel is. There should also be the playlist for the playthrough of Ta the Tasmanian Tiger 2 if you are interested. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you uh, sticking around to the end and have a great day.